Zego Cloud is one of the world's leading real-time audio and video cloud service provider and Zego Cloud enables enterprises and developers to easily and quickly obtain a real-time audio and video communication capabilities by integrating a single SDK and also enjoys smooth, reliable audio and video experiences with high quality even in weak network conditions. So with this, there is no need to start building from scratch. You can go live in minutes with just a few lines of code. Hope that sounds useful and interesting. So in today's video, I would like to show you how to build your video call up with Zego Cloud Service. So with that said, let's jump right in. Zego Cloud supports all cross-platform, whether it be on Android, iOS, on the web, Flutter, React Native, on Windows, Mac OS, and also Electron as well. So, much has been said, let's start building our app. You can go ahead and create an account with Zego Cloud. So once you are done, you'll be navigated to the admin console for you to create your first project. So for now, let's head towards the Zego Cloud documentation and see how it's been done. Zego Cloud comes with a core kit, which is a pre-built feature-rich core component which enables you to build one-on-one -on -one and group or voice calls into your app with just a few lines of code. As I said earlier, you can integrate on all platforms, it being on Flutter, React Native, iOS, Android on the web, but in today's video, I'll be focusing on Flutter. So below is a demo of the pre-built core component that Zego Cloud UI kit comes with. So here are the recommended resources. I want to get started. Hope you also want to get started. Right. So click on the button for a quick start. So we have a suggested video. You can go along. And also to integrate the SDK, you need to run Flutter Pub at Zego UI Kit Prebuilt Core as a dependency. And before we do that, we need to first of all create a Flutter project. So I'll do that quick in here. Flutter create, and I'm going to name the project as video call up so in here to start creating my project so once it's done you need to change the directory to the video call up folder and also open that in vs code with code in a period so it open that in vs code so these are the basic folders and files you see when you generate a Flutter project and basically the source code is found within the lib folder within that we have the main of that file that comes with the default code that's the counter app when you generate a Flutter project so I'll just choose my emulator in here and start the project so pressing F5 will just run and debug your code So this is just the counter app that comes when you generate a new Flutter project. When you click on the button there, the value there got to increase. So I'll just clean up the code a bit by getting rid of the comments and also the home page state for widgets and start everything from scratch. So in here, I'll be creating my custom home widget. So it's not yet created. So I'll head towards and create a new folder within the lib folder and name it as screens. So within the screens folder, I'll be creating a file. The file will be called home.dat so in here we need to generate a stateless widget and give it a name as home and for now let's return a scaffold so the scaffold is basically a class in flutter that accepts many widgets so within the main.dat file we need to import our home we just created in our main.dat file let's first of all import the material.dat to get rid of the errors so we need to import our home from the screen folder. There we go. So within the scaffold, it has a body property. So for now, let's return a test with Zego Cloud app. Yeah, Zego Cloud video call app. So you can see it over there, it's not in the safe area. So let's wrap the test within a widget known as the safe area. So you can see it over there. There we go, you can now see it over there. So for now, let's head towards the Zego Cloud documentation and add 
there's a go ui kit playboard core as a dependency to our project so let's copy that flutter pop add zigo cloud <coughs> zigo ui kit playboard core and place it within our terminal and install that as a dependency So the passport.yml file is where we get to see our installed dependency. So once it's done, we need to check the passport.yml file. Then that we can see we have the Zego UI kit pre-built core as a dependency over there together with the Copertino icons. It comes with the Copertino icons. So that's basically it. So in here, the next step is what import the package. So I'll copy that and I'll just import it within our home. I'll be creating a new file within the screens and I will name it as core page dot that. So within here, I'll just copy whatever is found within the home screen and paste it over here. And we need to change the home to the core page and also the test there and proceed. And also to use the Zego Cloud UI kit preload call in our project, we need to go to the Zego Cloud admin console and get the app ID and also the app sign. To do that, let's first of all bring our Zego Cloud UI kit preload call widget within our app. So I'll copy that in here. And within the call page, I'll just return the Zego Cloud UI preload call. So we need to get the app ID and also the app sign. So within the admin console, you need to create a new project. I already have one project created. So create a new project and choose voice and video calls and click the next button. You then proceed to give the name of the project and start with the UI kit. So since I already have one created, I'll be using that one. So I'll grab my app ID and also the app sign in here we need to create a variable call id of type string and pass in and pass that as an argument and also we need to require within the constructor as well we also need to pass the context within the callback function so now we need to configure some settings within the android we need to change the compiled SDK version to tech 3 So within the Android, we move into the app folder, then the build.gradle file, and change the compiled SDK version to 33. We also need to set up the app permission in the Android manifest.sml. So I'll copy that in here. We also need to prevent the obfuscation. Obfuscation means to make something difficult to understand. And also to prevent that, we need to create the pro profile within the app folder and paste it within the code below. We also need to add a config code to the release part of the build.gradle 
within the app folder. We need to add the app permission to the iOS as well. So that one is going to be easy. So I'll copy below the code within the iOS folder. We move into the runner folder and info.plist, we add the code to the dead part. So that's pretty much it for the configuration. So let's get rid of the safe area in here and return a center widget. So the center is in the chart property and I'm going to specify a row widget here and the row widget in turn also takes in children where you can specify different or multiple widgets within it and the first widget is going to be an expanded widget and the expanded widget takes in a chart property and I'm going to specify a test form field within the chart property so within that we are going to Specify it takes in the decoration, which in turn also takes in an input decoration. So within the input decoration, we are going to let's get rid of the cons in here. Within the input decoration, it takes in the label test. And I'm going to give it a test of joined a call by ID and saving the changes. So it also takes in the controller. So I'll Create a controller of call ID controller of which I'll be creating it in just a second. So I'll just create it. It's going to be final call ID controller, and it's going to be we are going to assign the test editing controller and passing an initial value of test, which is going to be call ID. And also get rid of the cons in here. There we go. So below the spanner widget is going to be an elevated button. The elevated button takes in an unpress attribute. That's kind of like the callback function when the button is pressed. It also takes in the chart property. We're going to specify a test of join. So let's remove the cons here. So let's check it out there we go you can see it's over there so let's wrap the row within the pattern and let's change the all to symmetric and specify horizontally bars left and right to be 12. there we go and also the row takes in the main as its alignment let's specify the main as its alignment to be center so main as its alignment of center and also it, it also takes in the cross as its alignment and let's set that to center as well there we go so within the on press we use navigator dot push and we pass in our contest and the second argument is the material page route which in turn also takes in the builder so the builder takes in the callback function of context and are going to retain the call page app so what we are actually doing here is when the button is pressed we are going to navigate to the call page app so let's import that the call page takes in an additional information that's the call id and that's going to be from the call id controller and we assess the test within that and that's pretty much it let's save any changes and try it out so we are done with everything we can run and test our app so when you hit on the join button you can see you've been navigated to the call page and we, we need to allow our app to access all this information there we go so that's basically it if you find this tutorial to be useful and interesting consider subscribing by hitting the bell icon 
and like the video as well share as well for the video to reach many see you in our next tutorial until then stay tuned